In this lecture, we are going to demonstrate the use of the matrix displacement method for analyzing an indeterminate frame belonging to a rather simple structure. This tea house was designed by architect David Jameson and built in a residential community in the United States near Washington, D.C. in 2009. The structure is in the form of a Japanese lantern and is being used primarily as a meditation space and a stage for musical recitals. The tea house hangs from two steel frames that are laterally braced at the top and aside for stability. The total weight to be supported by the frames is 36 kilonewtons, equally distributed among the four steel bars that connect the enclosure to the frames. Here, we wish to analyze one of the frames. For our purposes, the key dimensions are The frame is considered fixed at the base. The section properties for the beam and the columns are as follows. To analyze the frame, we start by writing the stiffness matrix for each member. Since AB and DC have the same length and section and material properties, they share the same stiffness matrix. Here is our beam column stiffness matrix in parametric form. Here are the parameters for the columns, which, when substituted in the generalized matrix, give us the member stiffness matrix. Please keep in mind that the member stiffness matrix defines a mathematical relationship between the member end displacements and forces. Here, D represents the vector of member end displacements, and F is the member end force vector, all specified in the global coordinate system. For member BC, here are the parameters. And here is the resulting stiffness matrix. For BC, since the member is subjected to external loads, the relationship between member end forces and displacements should be written this way, where P is the vector of fixed end forces due to the applied loads. Our frame has six degrees of freedom the displacements and rotations at joints B and C. We are going to use the member stiffness matrices to come up with the system stiffness matrix. Here is the contribution of AB to stiffness of the entire frame. The member adds to the system stiffness in directions one, two, and three only. Why? Because only these three directions are associated with the member. Directions four, five, and six placed at joint C, are not located on AB. By contrast, BC contributes to the frame stiffness in all six directions, since joints B and C are located at the ends of the member. And DC contributes to the stiffness of the system only in directions 4, 5, and 6, since the other three directions are not shared with the member. Adding these three matrices, we get the stiffness matrix for the entire system. Since we already have determined the elements of the member stiffness matrices, we can easily write the system stiffness matrix numerically, like this. The system of equations that we need to solve is K times D equals F, or where K is the system stiffness matrix, D is the unknown displacement vector, and F is the vector of joint loads. Since in this frame the loads are placed on the beam, not at the joints, we need to convert the member loads to joint loads. To do so, we start by determining fixed end forces due to the applied loads. For a beam subjected to a single concentrated load, the fixed end forces are... However, here we have two such loads, so let's use the principle of superposition to calculate the fixed end forces. For the load closest to the left end of the beam, we can write 
and the load closest to the right end of the beam gives us... Adding these two sets of forces, we get the total fixed end forces. Now we are in a position to determine the equivalent joint loads. Using static equilibrium, we transfer the member end forces to their adjacent joints, like this. These joint loads can be viewed as the effect of the member loads on the joints, so we can replace the member loads with the joint loads, like this. Then the vector of joint loads becomes... Now our system of equations can be written as... Solving the equations for the unknown displacements, we get... Using this joint displacement vector, we can write the displacement vector for each member. For AB, we get... Note that since joint A is fixed, displacements and rotation at the joint are zero. For BC, we have... And for DC, we can write... Now we are ready to calculate member end forces. For AB, member end forces are obtained by finding the product of the member stiffness matrix and member end displacement vector. Here is the stiffness matrix, and here is the displacement vector. For the member end force vector, we get... Let's show these forces diagrammatically. For BC, we have... Here our equation has an additional term, vector P. This is the vector of fixed end forces due to the applied loads. We computed it previously. The resulting member end force vector is... And here is the free body diagram for the member. For DC, since there are no member loads, the equation is written as, we know K in D, so F becomes Knowing the member end forces, we can easily determine the support reactions. They are Let's wrap up the solution by drawing the shear and moment diagrams for each member. For A, B, Shear is constant, and moment varies linearly between the two ends of the member. Moment is maximum at the upper end of the column. Member DC has shear and moment diagrams similar to AB. For BC, due to the presence of the applied loads, shear behaves like a step function, dropping in value at the points of application of the loads. Bending moment attains its maximum positive value in the middle segment of the beam, and it reaches its maximum negative value at the ends of member. We will examine the analysis of a more complex structure, an airplane hanger, in a future lecture.